So I'll try to preface the ones for all of you, you know, like that. No so whenever you're ready, cameraman, just give me my cue. Cameraman. We are good. Okay, so let's start like this. Uh, for each of you, so we, we get you all. What are your first memories of just music in general? You know, what sounds and songs co come to your mind when you think about music? Well, so are you kid if you oh, were, since you, since you laughed. That, nah, my, my first recollection, uh -huh. and I have, to, I have to use those terms of music, was my dad um, playing like Hank Williams joints, um, Tiger by the Tail, mm -hmm. and, 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 these, and, um, and this is back in the, in, in the time when um, WABC used to play music. They wasn't just right wing talk show. <laughs> and um, my father would blast the um, music mad late at night because he was drinking. And my mom used to be complaining, yo, we got to get up and go to school the next day. So it was like country of uh, Charlie Pride, um, uh -huh. Hank Williams, uh -huh. stuff like that. Tiger by the Tail, uh, okay. Okay. Man from Laredo, that kind of stuff. OK. Anybody else? I'd say one of my first would have to be something that, you know, I really keen in on, which would have to be like the early Jackson 5s, you okay. know what I mean? Because, you know, we was young and they uh -huh. was young, uh -huh. and, and it was like the modern day connection okay. between the youth. Right, okay. everybody you know had I mean? an afro. Yeah, you know, and just the sounds, and, it's, and they look like, like us, you okay. know what I mean? Just okay. the kids doing, being kids. Having a good time. Mel? No doubt. Uh, when, when I was young, it's like, like I used to have a hard time sleeping, and I remember I used to like be up like early in the morning, and the radio used to be on, and there was a DJ named Dan Ingram. Uh -huh. I don't know whatever station he was on, but that was I used to <laughs> listen to music early in the morning because I couldn't sleep. What kind of stuff did he play? It was like you know just uh, uh, like James Taylor, you okay. know that kind of the Beatles, okay. you know growing up like that there. Okay. Not really, it was before it was really black radio stations and. Okay for Frankie Crocker. So it was like the guy named Danny. Okay, and you're right. Um, like old Motown stuff, um, uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips, uh, you know, uh, Temptations, Jackson 5. I, that's when I first began to really take notice. I always loved music, um, but I really took notice of, of the kind of music and, and, and um, well, I paid attention to the lyrics uh -huh. at a very early age, like about four years old. My mom used to have this uh, Nancy Wilson record, mm -hmm. uh, Sunny, and um, she played it. And uh, I used to, I learned the words, and I learned the color of the actual, the 45, okay. and she would hide it from me in a stack of 45s because I bug her to death. Yo, mom, play this song, you know, play that song again. And uh, she hide it from me in a stack of 45s, and I go in that stack and find Sonny wherever she hid it. Was. You know, because I, cause I remember the, the color of the record. <laughs> That's great. So, for music in general, for each of you again, what's your first memory of, well, you didn't call it that then, I'm sure, but what we today call hip hop? What's your first hip hop memory, just period? Well, the first memory, you know, that we had, uh, that I had of hip hop, would have to be when uh, when we grew up at Twenty Three Park, okay. and you know, and uh, Flash at that time, he, you know, I mean, he didn't come from that neighborhood, okay. and that was our neighborhood where we grew up at, and okay. him just coming there, setting up the two great columns, okay. you know what I mean? This is before he had MCs or anything, and just playing in that park. You know what I mean? And it was just like, it, you could tell it was something magical happening uh -huh. right then and there, you know what I mean? And, and that was like my first memory of hip hop when Flash came to that park. Okay. You know, it was always like cool, the, the cool hurts, but when he came to our park mm -hmm. and, and, try, and chose that as the home base, when Grandmaster Flash and Friends 5, that was big. Okay, is that the same for each of you, or? I was, I was basically running behind Mel, because Mel was hanging out with Flash and them down by Cypress Avenue, the actual South Bronx. Uh -huh. Like where we came from, it's like the forest, the, um, it's, it's almost more senior, but it's like forest area. But I was running behind Mel, because um, Mel was going down there with Cowboy, mm -hmm. um, listening to Flash um, play down in like um, St. Mary's Park, right? It was a park. Right, right, right. And um, and um, Mel was Mel would you know be going out there, and I used to be hanging on the, on the west side with this other kid that used to live in our neighborhood. Uh -huh. And um, Mel used to be saying that they would go out there, and uh, Flash would be spinning out, because I didn't really know who Flash was or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, Mel, would, you know, would be saying that that they would be out there, and there would be girls out there, and that was one of the main things that I that you know that had me wanting to go out there with him because 
you know, it was girls out there. I was, I was, I was a shy cat, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really, right. you know, knew how to be in my butt. But um, this was an easy way to meet girls. Right, right. So right. I was running behind Mel and, and uh, um, seeing Flash, you know, um, um, with his little uh, um, manufactured uh, 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 Q and shit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Playing, uh, excuse me, playing the stuff, the um, Brecker Brothers and, and, and songs like that. Do you remember what uh, year this is? Shucks, you want to shut up. Nine years, what is this? Something like that. Something like that. Double, double. 75, 76. The first, the first time I seen the DJ, it wasn't even Flash, it was Smokey. Okay. He had, Smokey he had the system, the Smokatrons, he had a joint on Webster Avenue, it was the cave. Uh -huh. And we went there, it was like maybe 50 cents to get in, you know, something ridiculous like that. Okay. You know, it might have been like, nine or ten people in there and you know because we always like we it wasn't no mc so we was mostly dancing me and squad we used to dance break dance okay so okay. we was in there you know break dancing you know okay. and it was dj smoke okay okay yeah. now how'd y'all actually come together as the furious five well, well actually the, the first was the three mcs okay it was that was me creed and cowboy right and then uh, Squawk got in the group, and then uh -huh. back he, before he changed his name, his name was Mr. Ness. And then uh, Raheem was with the Funky Four. Okay. And then we, we that, you know, because it's like he was like the, as far as the best MC that was out there, like, you know, and I, I guess back then we was always trying to be, to make our group better. Right. So he was the best guy out there, okay. and then we had put him in our group. And then that made the Furious Five. He was like the, the you know, the icing on the cake as far as, you know, what we did because everybody had, they, you know, they functioned as far as what we did as a group. And, you know, Raheem was like that, you know, that, you know, hell of a rhymer, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like even better than me, you know, or just as good as me or whatever, you know what I mean? So okay. he was the icing on the cake and then that's how the Furious Five was, was okay. Furious Five. Okay. If, if, if you think about the Furious Five, like, you know, also Voltron type shit, you know, what was each year, like the way you just said, you know, this is Raheem's kind of role. Did each of you have like a specific role or a specific thing that you were best at or good at or known for? Without a doubt, okay. without a doubt. Just like Cowboy, you know, rest in peace. He was like the type of person that didn't write rhymes and anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I, at not any given rhymes. time, he could go any party and turn it out like bigger than you could ever imagine. Okay. That was his strength. Okay. You know, he was like the personal person of the group. Whereas, you know, like if it was a if it was a Nick game, mm -hmm. he'd go on a party and speak about how many Nick fans and, and this right, and that. So like he that. he right. and he had that ability to yes be aware of all what's going on. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And one I say one of my strengths was just being just one of the uh, you know flamboyant uh, persons of the group and just having that charisma to, to move about, you know, okay. and almost in a sexual manner. Mm -hmm. you but, see. It, and, but it wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, even if I was just standing there, my whole thing was like a, a sex campaign type mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. into this hip hop. And, that, you know, that was one of my chambers. Okay. Sexual chop. 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 Sexual um, get on the echo chambers, you know, and say my stuff but with a whole lot of echo. Like I always go, cause I like say, um, like a lot of my stuff, I used to like to trail off the Prince of Soul, you know what I'm saying? And then have the echo trail off like that. Uh -huh. But the echo used to um, hum a lot. So okay. you, didn't, you okay. didn't really, um, <laughs> and, and it's I, I fair to say too, you know what I mean? Whether y'all keep it, cut it, or whatever the case, Mel gonna say his part. But you know, when you hear all of the mixtape DJs right now, this and that, that and that. Creole was actually the one that mastered that. Okay. So when you hear the cats like the Kick Capris and mm -hmm. the Fizz Marthas and the Ron G's Ron and all of them, it, that's like they forte now. Mm -hmm. This is the cat that really put that on the map. Okay. You know what I mean? Not taking okay. nothing for them, but just giving of props course. back to, to where it comes from. Right, but right. Even, even, even from even right to the day, they call mixtapes mixtapes, and they ain't even mixtapes. They CDs. None of them, none of these <laughs> mixtapes guys, they don't even know what a tape is. You know what I mean? Right. But that right. just goes to show from what we did back then, it carries on to right now, and you can't unstamp it. Okay. You know what I mean? Even though they try to say that what we do might be non-significant, but it really is because you can't really do it without it. Without what, what we laid down, if you took all of that away, Right. Then it would be half a it would be half a song or half a show right. or it wouldn't be a mixtape. It would be called a mix CD. Okay, I mean, it would be, the, the game would be totally different. Okay, okay. 
what was the first occasion when the five of you rocked together as the Furious oh, Five? Oh, man. Oh, as the what Furious Five. five? Um, let's you know, see. The four of you plus Cowboy, God bless the death. Well, well, I don't, okay. At Forest Houses Community Center, uh -huh. um, uh, my man, DJ Eminem, and I think it was Charlie Chase, uh, DJed for us. Okay. And um, I had just pretty much like left uh, the Funky Four, uh -huh. and uh, my man Eminem was giving this party, and okay. he got the Furious Four okay. to do a show to do that party okay. with him. And he, I was his next door neighbor. Okay. And he asked me if if I would be down to do the show. So I'm like, yeah, I'm down. You know, he's like, all right, I'm put my, put your name on the flyer. So I'm like, cool. So <clears throat> that night, um, I rocked. And um, then uh, the Furious Four got on stage and did their thing. Mm -hmm. And like, it was basically their party. Okay. Um, so they controlled all of the money at the door, basically. Okay. So, $25. After, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so after the party was over, they called me backstage uh -huh. and was like, yo, you know, Raheem, how much money do you want? Right. So I was like, money? You know, I didn't want no money. I just wanted an opportunity to rock with the best. Right, right, right. And it was like, yo, you know, you just as good as any one of us, man. You know, how about if we just split up the money five ways? Right, right, right. And I was like, everybody. Basically. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically. That was a good time, man. And um, after that, you know, we, we was just rolling as the Furious Five. Okay, 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 okay. Did you guys, um, I'm sure you, 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 you did, but can you tell us about, you know, like a, a lot of the crews back then, we know of today because of the battles that it used to have. What was the uh, most significant battle you think you had with another crew? Well, to, to us, they was all significant, but then there was never really battles. See, our thing was like this here. We was so, as far as meticulous, as far as what we did, and we set the level so high. Okay, our thing sure. was like, it was us, and this is, you know I mean? I have respect for everybody back then, and even mm -hmm. the cats now, and I still feel the same way now as then. It's us, mm -hmm. and then it's everybody else that came up on us. We, right. we was the blueprint, and it ain't like, like if we battle somebody, uh -huh. it ain't like, you know, we in there like it's like a 15 round fight, we just going, right. you know what I mean? We, you we, just we, they them. did what they did, and uh -huh. we just came, and we just swept the floor. Okay. And that, that was our mindset, and that's what we went about doing, even from when we went from the street stage, even to the record stage, when we was playing with the groups, the barcades and the Commodores and all right, that. Right. We had a mindset, and it wasn't like we was blowing them out, right. but our mindset was like, listen, here we're gonna take the stage we're gonna do what we got to do we're going you know if, if nothing else we're going you know make our presence known okay. and it wasn't like we you know anybody was we was looking at it like it's competition and, okay. and i yeah i feel that way even right to the day if we put something together and we go on stage it ain't gonna be no comedy it ain't gonna be like okay yeah this is gonna be a tough one we just gonna do right. what we got to do and we're gonna wipe the table because that's that's the furious five you know okay. it ain't no it, you know it wasn't like you know the cold crush and and the fantastic, fantastic, like they had, you know, the mind. You know, it wasn't like that. Right. When the Furious came, you know, what I mean, just go ahead and do what you got to do because this is this is already done. This is a done deal. Just, you know, if it's a trophy, just put our name on it and right. we're good. And one, because even for this, you know, for this point, when we first started trying to do our routines, mm -hmm. we would we would play in gyms. And we felt we needed to be on the stage, so we got tables together. We put tables together. And that's what I was just about to say. You yeah. know what I mean? And cut you off. The Furious Five uh -huh. built the actually the first stage, stage for hip hop. Okay. You understand? Know Before that, right it up. was just ropes. Right. You know, in other words, uh -huh. it'd be the DJ right here uh -huh. and the MCs would be here, but it was all on the left. Same level. Same level, right. and it's a right. rope. You okay. know, we put stages together where it became. Heavenly glory Respect after that. You understand, right. you understand Respect. that? You know what I mean? So, and I think that's real significant to keep, you know what I mean, what we just said, that we built the first stage for hip hop. Okay, 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 okay. That, that's amazing, man. You guys also had such a, such a sense of visual style and flair about the way you looked, the way you dressed, what you did. Where did that, come from I mean, right and, and that's yeah. just from that same mindset we coming out there like, listen, we like whole five five cats from the Bronx in the, the streets in the ghetto mm -hmm. and when we 
put our fame on the line, our thing was like, listen, we're going about this like we're stars, we're rock and roll, compared to what everybody else was doing, and they was, you know, trying to be street or whatever, and we were just going to go, we going to go straight Hollywood, we want to <laughs> we want to match up with Bon Jovi, we right. want to match up with, with uh, uh, Jilly Idol, and we right. played with all and, and, okay. and, that, and that's what we did, you okay. know what I mean, to match up as far as the way we look, the way we command the stage, the way we're going to stand there, we had it, down that coal of a science on all of those levels. Mm -hmm. Like we just not gonna go on stage and get the mic. Okay, yo, no, we had the whole the whole thing down, the whole movements and everything scientifically mm -hmm. meant something mm -hmm. to where we're gonna control this crowd and we're gonna get them to react a certain way to what we're doing. And that and that was what our whole mindset was about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about being ghetto, it wasn't about being gully. We didn't care what nobody thought about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Come right out the building in the ghetto, long boots, spandex pants. Draws on the outside of your pants, a long trench coat, a whip, get into the band, and everybody looking like, oh shit. Right. You know what I mean? But we doing us. We was doing right, us. We right. wasn't, our mindset wasn't like, okay, you know, I don't, what, what are the drug dealers, what are these cats going to think about us? We, didn't, we, we, we was beyond that. We was way right. beyond, the, you know, we was like, we were the Furious Five, Grand After Fast and the Furious Five. This was like the whole, you know, this was our thing. We just doing what we had to do. Okay. And one of the biggest misconceptions is, you know what I mean? You know, like a lot of rappers that came after us mm -hmm. from our bloodlines, mm -hmm. like, you know, all due respect to the Run DMC and mm -hmm. them, you know, because. You know, a lot of them cats be like, you know, well, we just want to look like the average folk and da da da. But when we was doing what we was doing, mm -hmm. everybody in every borough was running around from the like right, right, jackets, right, right. Like, yeah, from yeah. the Eddie Murphys or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And at some point, you know, you even seen Michael Jackson putting studs and stuff on his jackets, right. the who bad and all that. That was all our chamber. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, no disrespect to Mike, but I mean, everybody seen what the Fish was doing, and right. the whole neighborhoods was walking around wearing leathers. They Rick couldn't James, get as elaborate as us because their money wasn't as long as us. Mm -hmm. But whatever they could afford, it was just a jacket, mm -hmm. and, and it's just a rabbit tail. Right. That's what was going on. <laughs> right, right, right. And they know that. They know that. Okay. How did you guys hook up, and when did you hook up with Grandmaster Flash? Well, I, I, well, how we really hooked up with Grandmaster Flash, it was like, it was Flash, and it was a guy that used to be down with Flash called Mean Gene. Mm -hmm. And at one point, me and Mel went to the same high school, and we had a little break group. Okay. And somehow, Mean Gene brought Flash and their crew to our school to challenge us. Okay. That's how we right. first okay. met Grandmaster right. Flash, okay. and we battled okay. in okay. our school. Right. And we beat him. <laughs> I just got to say that. <laughs> and we beat him. Right, right, right. Mel, 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 Mel Scott was nice with that. I wasn't right with that. But Mel and Scott was nice break dancing. Right, right, right. Not, not, not the kind of stuff that, that cats be doing nowadays. It was a little bit uh, um, more less floor moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, like an up rock. You know, more yeah, up rock yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scott was, was okay. a lot of, lot of yeah. good hand stuff. Yeah. And, you know, smooth mm -hmm. footwork. You know, but, we, and, we but you okay. know, but the point was, after we, you know, rope dance with them and beat them, mm -hmm. we was good people. So it right. wasn't like a thing, like, right now we're going to fight. Right, right. It was all love afterwards. And I guess he see, he must have seen something and felt something in the energy in the neighborhood from where we was at because mm -hmm. ultimately he made that his home base, right in the center of the people where he rope danced against. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's how we really met Flash. Okay, okay. And then how did you become an actual group starting to do the parties together and, and, and everything? Because like I said, you know, from the first question when he brought his turntables uh -huh. to 23 Park, Park. Okay. that's where, you know, we all lived at. We used to break day together. We used to like sleep in parks, not because we was homeless, but uh -huh. it was like going from a young boy into that teenage thing, sleeping in a park and breaking day was big. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, we did it! Yo, we did it! Yo, that was big. Yeah, and, and, and the whole point of us getting together with Flash, see the whole concept of the DJ and MC, uh -huh. most DJs uh -huh. did their own rapping. Her, At that time. Coke yeah. Rock, Timmy Tim, Hollywood. Clark Kent, but not Hollywood. Hollywood. St uh, okay. uh, uh, Starsky, right. but Flash didn't have that good uh, speaking okay. voice. Okay. So, like, he would have a mic there over there, but he would just leave his mic oh, to the side, thing. and then anybody could basically come and just pick up the mic, and you know what I mean? And we was the first guy that just specialized. We weren't DJs. Right. We were MCs. Right. And that's, we, that's what we called ourselves, MCs, and that's how that term came about, because we was the guy that just specialized totally in rocking mics, 
and didn't have nothing to do with the DJ because before that, just like even Grandmaster Cass, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a rapper, he raps, mm -hmm. but he was originally a DJ, okay. DJ Casanova Fly. Fly. Right. Okay. So we were, the, we were the first true mic rockers, MCs, master ceremonies, however you want to put it, mm -hmm. and then we changed it to EMC, EE, -E, yeah, just right, to, right. you know, when everybody jumped on the MCs, we tried to ship it over because we, you know, we never wanted to see ourselves on the same, you know, level. We always wanted to be the high caliber dude. Right. So, you know, that's that's where all the MC thing came, you know, and that's how us and class got together from us being MCs right. and he not having a good speaking voice, so we brought the voice to what he was doing and made it more of a, you know, of a show situation okay. as compared to just, you know, doing parties. Right, huh. first three, then four, then five. Then five. Right. Flash was the spectacle on the turntables and we were the spectacle on the microphone and okay. you know, on the stage. Okay. Speaking of MCs, then and now, for you guys as the originals, what's the definition of an MC and then what makes an MC great? Well, I mean, it, 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 if, if you ask 10 people, you might get uh, 10, 10 different people. definitions. Right. I mean, they are the originals. As far as, That's as, far as from what I, I would see as an MC, and as far as from what we did, uh -huh. you know, just, I mean, you, it, you, our thing is just about, you know, rocking the mic. You know, you, you you good with your rhymes, you know, and that's and that's what you live for. It's like mm -hmm. guys now, they have more of an ulterior motive kind of thing. You know, they trying to wrap their way into a high position in the hood. I don't know what they I don't know what they're doing because I'm 44 right. years old, so it don't interest me right. as far as about what kids is. You know how what they feel that they're doing. Okay. And, you know, see, my thing is just like right now, we just trying to build on a legacy and top it off. What was mm -hmm. going on 20 years ago? That was 20 years ago. You know, if you put me on the stage, you put the period five on the stage right now. And I'm, and I'm not saying this because I'm stupid. I'm, you know, I mm -hmm. analyze things. I'm a student. I'm a student of the game. So mm -hmm. I actually respect what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if you put us on the stage right now, we're going to do what we got to do because we know what we're doing. This ain't, you know what I mean, as far as music. And, right. and for the last I knew, this shit is still about music. I don't care how gully, you know, we, we going to shoot up. Okay, shoot, kill, police, by, by all means. You're the man. <laughs> but when you, when you come on stage, right. I'm going to show you something about this stage. I'm going to show you how to hit that mic right and how to right. hit that stage right. Right. So, I mean, that, as far as MC is to me, it's just topping off what we, our, our legacy and, okay. and, 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 and showing, you know, and showing these young kids that we viable right now. I mean, I mean, five years from now, every younger kid is going to have more in common with me than he got with these young kids. We and we and we just guys, we rock the mic. I'm, I'm 44 years old. I got a son that's 13. He got a worse criminal record than me. All I got is a beat misdemeanor for driving without license because right. I had my first bed before I had a license, and, and he in jail. You know what right. I mean? So th 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 that's the difference between what's going on as far as MC and now and what they left right. and what we tried to leave and what we about. You know, we all clean, you know what I mean, like clean cut guys basically. I mean, I, you know, I come from the streets like everybody else, but you know, it's, it's about that mic. I'm not going, you know, uh, praise the streets or praise, you know, cocaine or, you know, praise drugs. I, you know, don't do it, that. It's that mic. Don't I, I, I know that mic. And don't let him force you to do it. See, don't do it. <laughs> That, that you can um, have a nine in your waistline and puff your chest out and, and, and talk about you're gonna murder this person or you're gonna do this violent thing, you know what I'm saying? But in the end, you're gonna end up on stage anyway. So if you do something, or you think you wanna end up on stage, mm -hmm. so if you do something, it ain't like they, they can't find you because <laughs> the, the bottom line is to me, uh -huh. it's about writing and rhyming. If you're gonna write and rhyme, then yo, that's the standard. Mm -hmm. It's not a. It's not a thing about um, I'm this fat or I'm this skinny. I'm this color. I'm that color. It's right and right. Okay. Okay. What makes okay. an MC great for me is you know I, I judge an MC based on their flow, uh, their lyrical content, and their ability to rock a crowd. Okay. And um, and how they how they how they marry to the beat. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there are there are a lot of uh, MCs out today that that I admire and there are a lot of MCs from sure. yesterday that I admire right. and, um, overall what Mel said you know just remaining a student of the game mm -hmm. keeps you on top of your game okay okay let's take it back a bit 1979 first time you hear Raptors Delight Sugar Hill Gang wow. I hated it <laughs> well let's do okay go ahead hated it I'm gonna tell you straight up first time we heard us uh, uh, rappers in light, we hated it to death. Uh -huh. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, everything that was going on in the neighborhoods and the streets, we like, yo, this is not an official crew. Mm -hmm. Who is the people right. that took something that we created 
and, and, and almost like just cast in on our blood, sweat, and tears. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we hated it to death mm -hmm. because even before Rappers of Light came out, people was approaching us many a times, yo, do a record, do a record. But, mm -hmm. you know, we wasn't as open-minded to see, like, yo, who, who, want, who want to buy this on a record? The concept you was, was it, strange. It, it, it was strange because to us. We was used to doing, like, hour, hours-long parties. Right. And we never right. could really come to grips with condensing it to, like, one song and then just doing a routine. Right, right, right. Uh, Sylvie was incredibly, she had incredible foresight when it came to that kind of thing. You know, um, mm -hmm. but um, the, 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 the notion of it is mad simple. Mm -hmm. But you ha what you have to understand is that at, at that time we was doing our thing, we was concentrating on doing shows. Mm -hmm. We didn't think about just breaking the shit down to one little small condensing right energy, right. capturing right. that energy right. for, for three minutes. minutes on a song. You know what I'm saying? Three minutes. Okay. Because okay. all the songs that we heard, like, like saying, we, we um, listen to the t Temptations and Cats like that, and these were songs, songs, songs. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, not, not, not cats getting up there and saying rhymes that we made up, or we were sitting around in our room. We right. had no real concept of just bringing the shit down right. to one little. It's, you had to be there. You had to be there. And, right. then, and also, back then, it's like the worst thing you could be in the hip hop community was a biter. Right. And so right. when we heard my right. man doing like. Everybody else rhyme, even from Imp the Dimp, from Raheem and Kaz and right. all type of different people. I mean, right from the gate, you know, in our head, yo, it, it, it was like, yo, this d is done. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? But what it did for the Furious uh -huh. is like, yo, let's go handle our business. Okay. That's when we really got the record business, and okay. then that's when we, we became who we became okay. outside of the the street credibility. And our whole focus, once again, was to run the table and we went to Sugar Hill Crush and we ran the table. Destroy. Okay, yeah, that's like, what it was like, all about. Okay. A, lot, a lot of people don't realize, like Scope just said, um, he, he just touched over it lightly, that, uh, like, for example, Big Bang Hank from the Sugar Hill mm -hmm, Gang, he, mm -hmm. he used Cat other people's right. rhymes. He used a, a, a large, a large yeah, portion of, of worst crime Grandmaster Cass, right. who was known as Casanova Black at that time, <laughs> rhymes, and he used a, a portion of my rhyme. You yeah. know, okay. the them, the women's pimp. That's the, okay. that's okay. basically the rhyme that made me popular. Okay. Right. In 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 the Bronx around that time. That's important to say because I, I, I think a lot of people know about the Grandmaster Cass yeah. part. But yeah. not yeah, your boy. Yo, yo, Hank, you owe me some money, Hank. <laughs> I want my money, Hank. <laughs> the hook was Hollywood. The hook was Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, hotel, motel, that was Hollywood. You know what I mean? So, you know, so, and, you know, and I remember even one time having a conversation with him about that. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, you know what? As far as Master G and Mike and them, they really didn't even know. You know what I mean? They were just doing what they doing. But you from the Bronx, you, you knew, knew what you were doing. We was more mad at you right. than any. Him. Right. Because right. he took it and just ran with it. And then not only that, you know what I mean, we are on a next record coming out of the own Miss Rob and the sons of Joey Robinson mouth. He uh -huh. was going to use our shit. Okay. I mean, our stuff. Okay. Okay. We had a rhyme the Raw had called My Mercedes, yeah. Young Ladies. And he, they, he actually put it on a record and somebody pulls their coat and be like, yo, yo. That's them, that's them dudes, the furious shit. And then that's how they came to attention, like, yo, this dude be biting. Right. And they went and brought the record, they like, yo, we can't do that. That's right. their stuff is on the record already. Because right. hey. it's true. Now, back in, in the time true. before records, uh -huh. um, um, hip hop was very territorial. Mm -hmm. um, everybody had their set. And, and, and people rhymed in there in, 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 the, in the style that they rhymed in and anybody that said anything that was something that they didn't write this would this would be enough to start a fight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we would we would yeah we would be ready to fight over ours right. so for, for a guy to just come out of nowhere with a record and this and, and his the, the thing that he's saying is totally plagiarized right. <laughs> it was just like everybody was just up in arms right, right. Up in arms. but you know in 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 retrospect, uh, and, and looking at it now, we know that it, it's all business. And um, we didn't know anything about copyrights at the time. Mm -hmm. So once we learned of that, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we ran and, you know, got, got uh, 
any lyrics that we had left that, right. that Hank didn't write. <laughs> right. <I'll> copy it. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's uh, talk, talk about your career now. Okay, now you're recorded. Now, now you're making songs. Right. Um, uh, out of that set of material, what are some of the songs that, that, that you think about now that few represent the Furious at their best? I would, me, I would personally have to say super rapping mm -hmm. because you get to see you hear the uh, versatility of uh, of how we just rap harmonize and what we was doing on the streets like four or five years before right before that even hit the record okay. and freedom okay. okay because you know freedom was like it was so magical because first of all it's the first time they captured it on a record okay. but that's stuff that we was doing in parks parties. and parties, okay. you know what I mean, way back and they captured like all of us, like prior before that, when Sugar Hill recorded, uh -huh. because I, I have to say them because they was the only one that actually recorded before us in okay. hip hop. You know, they was in the studio for hours. Okay, okay. When we came through, they set up five mics. One, two, three, four, five. They was looking at us like we was bugging. They were right. like, what you mean? Y'all gonna go in at the same time? They didn't even understand it. Right, Miss right, Rob right. or none of them. Right. Like, turn it on, put the track on, because uh -huh. just around a couple of days before that, we already practiced on the roof, mm -hmm. on Cowboy Roof. Mm -hmm. We went in that studio. I think we did Freedom in one take. Okay. One take. Oh, nice. and, and, from rhyme to rhyme to switch over to everything. And we were saying stuff like on the track added. We were thinking that they was just, you know, we, we, that they was going to do another take. So we were saying stuff, you just ad living, you know, um, feeling the song. They and kept it. They on. kept it. They kept it. On. Okay. That, yeah. That's, how, that's how, how well it turned out, even though we, we was just. We, we, we went through it as if we was going to try to do it, but okay. we didn't have the mindset that they were going to keep this. Keep that. Okay. Right. And okay. that also became, they got to see, like, in tonight, it's our rhyming ability, but our character and our, and our, and our swagger. Right. right. And how our we just swagger. Yeah, right. swagger. Even, even yeah. up all on, like, on all the late tracks, like on Eighth Wonder, on mm -hmm. Apache. Monster they Jam. still had us come oh, in the studio and just do the party. Up. Like, you know, the live, ooh, yeah. But, and that, that, all of that stuff in the back of those records uh, oh, you, guys. Cooked, okay. you know just for our little party atmosphere you know okay. I mean that that was our whole thing but just like our, our score was saying I, I think uh because I don't really like listen to a lot of a lot of music and you know just somebody was just playing music and they play super rapping and just the way our flow was mm -hmm. just like if not listening to the rhyme style because rhyme skills have progressed from mm -hmm. the, as far as what they were doing, but just as far as our technique and our delivery mm -hmm. with using five guys, mm -hmm. that's something that nobody never captured it with the Again. ease right. that we did it. I mean, right. that, it, it would go down, we could pass that down, right. and it was, it was just so, we had it down so cold, you know, it just nobody was able to capture that. And then I heard the, like the little piece of the record, like tears almost came to my eyes, because it's like, this is stuff, I mean, even though the rhyme skills have progressed, but this is stuff that nobody it's don't even do. It just broke down like to the one rich guy, he's just saying his right. rhyme. Right. And, and it came from <laughs> us just, you know, like we gonna put the five thing and you know, we like technique and you know, just passing it back and forth. And it took time for us to actually get it that cold to do. And then, and then I see what's going on now. It's just like, you know, I was like, it's like, where, where, did, it, where did it all where go? It go? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Why, why can't we do this shit again? You know, this, right. this is like, you know, real, you know, this is like real MCsman shit. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, like, right, right. And, you know, MC's it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, a, <laughs> it's like a dying art form, you know, that, exactly. that, you know, that we champion that, you know? Okay. Right. Okay, okay. Well, let's bring it to today just a little bit since we're talking about that. Um, what do you think the Furious Five's influence on hip hop and the art of MCing? You know, I mean, you guys are still doing stuff. So, but, but, but what's your legacy? I think I, I want you know. Yes, you know. One of my opinions is is like everything that's going on now mm -hmm. is is the seed and the birth of what we did then. And why I say that is because there's no great rapper or whatever from a Jay Z to whatever. You can't do a show without saying ho. That's what the Furious Five brought. You can't do a show without saying, throw your hands in the air, wait, say, oh yeah. That's what the Furious Five brought. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't even rap and pass a mic from one rapper to another rapper without a pause in between. That's what the Furious Five brought. Okay. We brought not only that, we brought, when you see like, the hype man, the official six man, and all of that. We brought all of that stuff because while one was rhyming, 
the other one might have just been on the side posing. Right. But and all of that. So when you see mm -hmm. cats come on stage and they trying to add something and bring something, and they doing a poor job, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, mm -hmm. but we brought so, all of that to the table. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, even, <laughs> even as far as like as far as content and what people say on the mic, as far as our lyrical content, when we did the message, a child is born, that was that first street poetry, white lines, mm -hmm. you know, as far as rapping about drugs, they just get they just got it so they just got it so one-sided that mm -hmm. they got it like as far as you just praising just one particular thing aspect. about being on the streets, whereas our thing was we just had the whole aspect of what was going on and just putting the picture out there like just making a full painting. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like just okay. just the whole, you know, just the whole 360 of what Hip hop even could be mm -hmm. as well as it what is you know what I mean this this, this the Fury Five anybody that really know about hip hop see we ain't really got to prove ourselves even mm -hmm. though if it takes that you know we gonna do that anyway because mm -hmm. this is our thing this is our music you know what mm -hmm. I mean hip hop is our music just mm -hmm. like it's their music too it ain't like you know right. it's something that you know they got a stamp on a oh yeah well them guys they did the twenty no you know what I mean because it, it, if, 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 it, if it was if it wasn't for us I mean it might have been it might have been but then it might not have been you right. know what I mean. Exactly. And, 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 it would have been something totally different. different. Yeah, different. Yeah, no. You see what I'm right. saying? It would have been something totally different. So right. you can't do it without the fear. Even, even right now, I mean, like I'm saying, they're doing it, right. but they have doing it because right. it's like a, a lot of the things that they should understand about rhyming and rapping and stagemanship and even about being a person. I mean, just having people skills. They don't got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, 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 they they, they right. get famous to, to not want to be famous or, you know, you get out of the ghetto to be back in the ghetto. It's like they got the game <laughs> twisted up. Oh, it's a cat like me. Like, listen, this is this is how you do it, dog. You know what I mean? And just for them to understand what show business is. You know, right. they got the business part, right? You know what I mean? It's, you, you can't really do it. You, you, it's, only, it's only one way to do it. It's show business. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I think, right. as far as I'm concerned, our legacy, it's still being built. Every, still everything being built. we do is like a page of history. It's just okay. going to keep on moving. It ain't, it ain't over. Right. Like I said, you, you put us on stage, we're going to get the job done. So it's still all good. You know what I mean? Right. Well, for me, um, our legacy is every time I listen to the radio or I, I hear um, or I see a, a music video and um, I hear an artist that has um, uh, encompassed a portion of one of our songs mm -hmm. uh, and utilized it in one of their songs. It's like, you know, and, and like a lot of the kids today mm -hmm. who who don't recognize Where that comes from, who right? the Furious Five are and, right. and you know, they heard the name, right. but they can't make the connection between the name and, and the music. Okay. Um, you know, like like little little phrases like can't, won't, don't stop, rocking to the rhythm cause I get down, you know. Right. Um uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Rapping like hell, make it sound like heaven. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on, Melly Mel, come and get some. You know, things like that. Uh -huh. um, let me know that we have influenced quite a bit of people. Okay. And, and that. Okay. That means something to me. That's a lot. And, and I yeah. think even down to the, to, you know, to build on what, what um, Mel and, and Scorpio were saying about certain things that are said. Like, cause I, I can remember when um, we was playing at the Black Door. That was a club that that we. Um, used to play at we was the three MCs mm -hmm. and um I, I, I believe that um this kid Billy was getting ready to go to the army and um um uh, Cowboy was on the mic and this Cowboy was really really good at this because he like say for a person like he didn't write many rhymes but um he had an ability to get in front of people and not be afraid to have them do what he wanted them to do mm -hmm. so he would get on he, he was um the kid Billy was getting ready to go to the army, and um, and um, Cowboy was on the mic just mimicking like how the cadence that they use when they march people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, he he turned that into like a jingle, you know, that like like hip. I'm not gonna say it because I'm, I'll butcher it, but that, <laughs> that hip hop type cadence. Okay. And now, All right? That, yeah, I mean, he did the piece just like he said. Then you go go we're gonna do a switch up. It's gonna be a live switch up. Okay. You know, he did the thing like you know hip hop, the hip hip, the hop, the hop, the hip hip hip, the hip hip hop. Okay. Just like that. Right. And um, at that time, disco was king. Right. And um, they used to use that term derogatory right. to explain right. hip hop shit. Right. Hip hop shit. Right. Those hip hoppers. Right. Right. You know? right. 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 And and mm. even even uh, even the basic um the this is what Mel was saying earlier, but I just want to build on this. Uh, the DJ is the guy that's that's dealing with all the records, mm -hmm. and the MC is the guy that's saying all the rhymes. That format is still in place right 
Right, no right. That, that, that you guys set up. Okay, okay. Mel, you had mentioned the, the message about five minutes ago. Um, now, that record was so different than anything else that was going on at that time. Just where did it come from? Tell me about the process of, of writing it and what's so special about it. Well, it to actually, this day. The, the, the message was actually a record that nobody really didn't want to do. <laughs> well, the Hill Gang was supposed to originally do the message. Okay. And, uh, and, and they threw the tape away. We didn't really think that it was something that was going to be done. And there was Sylvia Robinson. She was like, just was so adamant about somebody doing the record. And okay. then we figured, you know, if that's going to be the next big thing that she's going to put the push behind, mm -hmm. that, you know, we should do the record. So we did, you know, did the, uh, the, the main body of the record. And then it was the one verse that we did from Super Rhyme, The Child Is Born. Right. Okay. She put that on the end part of the, of the record. Okay. And, uh, and then we did the record, but n nobody really, I didn't, I didn't really think it was going to be all that good. But then when I really realized that it was a big record, because of what it was talking about, it wasn't dancing. It was like more like a darker kind of thing, the vibe that was going on. But then they, they brought the record over to Disco Fever, and this is everybody that's dancing. And then when they played the record and people just kept dancing and grooving, you know, mm -hmm. to the record, then we knew that, you know, it was on yeah, or something. But that was where we tested all the records out up in Disco Fever. Okay. So then by the time it hit the radios, it went gold in a week. And, you know, and up to this day, that was like the history making record. It changed the course of rap and, you know, just brought it, you know, everything to a whole, uh, it brought the whole thing to a whole nother dimension and then put us as a group on a whole nother level because we became like a symbol of, of something that was more important right. than just uh, hip hop and the music. We became like the symbol of the black guy from the ghetto that's, you know, yes. got a voice and that's saying something, you know, right. that's speaking about what's going on in the streets. And that was, that became our, that became our function right. and our focus. We was like more like uh, uh, statesmen you know, and spokesmen as far as what was going on in, in the streets and in the hood and what everybody was feeling at that time. Okay. L let me ask you guys this. Did you ever, even in your wildest imaginations, ever think that this thing that you did, this art, will go from the South Bronx to the globe, the, you know, the world. I mean, do you look back, because you have such a unique perspective, y'all can look back three decades deep, you know, and look at this. When you look back, what is that journey, what do you feel about that journey? Well, I think that journey is, obviously we couldn't foresee that at because, time, you right? know, at the time when we were just doing parties, we couldn't even foresee just doing it on a record. Right, exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But uh, once it got to the point where we really captured you know what I mean, was where well, they capture our essence mm -hmm. on a record. And when we used to travel the world, to Germany, to London, to Holland, to Scotland, and stuff like that, that's what really, it didn't only just bring us together with different people musically, it lowered our defenses okay. about white people, okay. different races and stuff like that. Okay. You know what I mean? If you just want to be honest about right, this right, right. situation, you know what I mean? Because even like going to places like Germany, the only thing we knew about Germany was the history of Hitler. Right. You know what I mean? But when you go there and people that can barely speak English and you it's see same, like same. two or three thousand people like like this and that, that's why right now, you know, we are so open minded and comfortable around a lot of different people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? At any one given time, you know, because of us just traveling the world and, and really just knocking down all of these barriers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and making it real easy for other artists to go there and fuck it up again, but <laughs> we're <laughs> coming back and, and build it back up again. You know what I mean? Because, right. see, they, a lot of artists have it so easy mm -hmm. about traveling now and, 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 you know, going abroad and going to different places where they wasn't, you know, brought up and that they is taken for granted. Mm -hmm. See, we was the cast that went there and played with, like, the Clash at Barnes and right. had cans thrown at us and rocks and stuff like that and still came back the next day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right. what looked natural now, trust me, blood, sweat and tears, disrespect, everything came with that and we was the guys that was doing it, mm -hmm. even more so than Sugar Hill, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because they had their one record, mm -hmm. but we just became the people's champion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if they went overseas 10 times, we went overseas 40 times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we was the people. Okay, okay. Okay, any, anything else? Oh, shit. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, okay, I remember. Um, um, of course, um, coming up, um, we, we didn't have any real long-term 
I, of course, we wanted to try to be around for as long as we could be around. Right. But as far as it developing into this media, uh, like I said, you make a record, next thing you know, you want television in the movies. No real concept of that. Like, I remember in the, one of the rhymes that Mel wrote, for, I think it was Super Rap. I mm-hmm. see myself. Right. In a magazine, my picture Put your, uh, on I'm a not, TV It's not like that. Yeah, so Mel had a little concept of, yo, <laughs> we could probably, you know, get on television, you know what I'm saying, with this thing. Right. I, 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 look, I was just happy to just to be around and, and, and to get the opportunity to, to, to say the things that I was writing while I was in my room. I had no real, um, this, might, this might not be a good thing, but I had no real um, uh, uh, insight as far as... Um, uh, uh, the, 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 the opportunities that would develop. You right. Know? right. I'm glad that they did because um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Like for the way things are now, I wouldn't right. trade it for the world. I would like to be. Uh, um, I would like for the group to be more of a part of it. Right. But the opportunities are bound. Okay. To try to change something right now. Right. Right. Speak- to be over my dead cold body. <laughs> Speaking of change, not changing hip hop. Is there anything about hip hop today that you would change? That you well, don't like. I'm gonna tell, at I'm all. tell you the one thing, not that we would, that because you really can't. I mean, hip hop is a business, and, and we, I understand it from a business perspective. Is one thing that people don't understand about hip hop that they they will learn is that hip hop has been broken down to its youngest level. Like a, a the average two three year old, they understand what hip hop is. They understand the music. But what I always try to explain to people is that when we were 17, it was people that came to our party and they were 25. I'm 44 right now, so those same people still like hip hop. They still love the music, right. but they're like me. They don't understand, and I don't understand, the mechanics of what's going on now. I mean, I, I know that 50 Cent and Eminem, they sell, right. but I don't really get it, and I'm not supposed to. Because <laughs> my, you, my right. the hip hop for me, and hip hop for me and other people, mm-hmm. is totally a different thing, because hip hop grew up, like how I grew up. I, I still love hip hop, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna listen to guys talk about shooting guns and, and selling dope like they love it, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I know better, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. The guy that sells dope mm-hmm. on the street is really the scum of the earth. You can be his man if you want to. I'm not gonna be nowhere near that shit. Right. You know what I mean? And right. there's millions of people that think the same way. Okay. And that's what people don't understand about hip hop. It grew up. They, Some they, of the hip hop is grew up. Young, 50. Right. Hip hop is hip hop is a 50. I'm 44. Hip hop is a definitely 50. And a lot and a lot of people don't understand that. It's just like on the BET Awards, they had everybody that was in the business. They was in there, and you know, 50 was there, and Jay Z was Usher. there, Usher was there. The hottest, the hottest in the business. Dougie Fresh, us, uh, 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 Public Enemy, mm-hmm. we came on stage and everybody said, in, in unanimous, Man, that man. was the best part of the whole segment. Man, so, man. And people th- thought it was a fluke, but what they, but th- that just showed it that we're viable. People want to see us, they love us, because right. you can't recreate what we brought to the table, having fun, just the reality, and just seeing it. I really didn't do nothing. My whole thing was I just walked off stage and <laughs> took my shirt off. Oh, man, that was great, it was beautiful. Because <laughs> it was hip hop, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing, and everything everybody did was 20 years old. Right, right. But people love to see that. Okay. And that's the big thing, oh man, we don't want to see them guys. Young people might not want to see it. Right. But they should, because like, I don't want to see 50 Cent, but I do. (laughs) And it's all the same thing. Hip hop, so if if, if one thing should change, it should be a whole global universal, young people and old people understanding what the music is and and then putting it all together. And then you have the best of the music. You just don't have like 50 songs in a row. God, Chuck Gully, I'm going to shoot this, I'm going to shoot that. A lot of it I like, Mm -hmm. but I don't like the 12 song. You're going to shoot somebody too? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. Right. Good God. Right. I mean, we're going to stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever happened to all, uh, you know. No, you right. Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. Yeah, yeah. hip hop definitely um, today, I-, I feel as if hip hop could be more diverse. Mm-hmm. And and I-, I think that there are there are some artists that uh, that have the courage to take chances and, and, you know, dare to be different, but there aren't enough. And, and I don't think that the artists who are who are not afraid to take mm-hmm. those chances and dare to be different, I don't think that um, the the either the companies that are behind them aren't giving them the push that they necessarily deserve, mm-hmm. or um, they're being kind of you know put on the back burner because that's. 
perhaps not what's selling, selling right. you know, or perhaps right. that's not what they want to sell. Okay. You know, okay. and it's unfortunate because there are many people who have uh, a lot of positive things or or light-hearted things to say rather than, you know, I'm going to stand on the corner, I'm going to sell a key, and I'm going to shoot this cat if he comes and tries to take the corner that don't belong to me in the first place <laughs> away from me. Right, you know, right. I, that's, I mean, you know, I understand it on, right. on one hand, right. but I don't agree with it on the other. But, okay. you know, it's all, it's all supposed to be art. Right. And once, once, you know, art is supposed to imitate life. Life mm -hmm. is not supposed to imitate art. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, once you, once you take it out of the realm of entertainment and, you know, you have somebody go on the radio station and, you know, they do an interview and, you know, I talk about how I don't like this one song or mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not feeling this one style. And mm -hmm. then when I go to leave the radio station, the, the guy the that I'm talking about, about is outside waiting for me <laughs> and he's shooting at me. Right. We have a problem. Right. You know what I mean? So right. I, I think that uh, in, in that respect, I think that hip hop could, could use a facelift. And uh, I'm a plastic surgeon. Baby See? boy. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. no, but I'm, I'm going to echo on, on, on what um, Mel and, and, um, and, and um, Raheem said. It, 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 it would, it, it, it's known that the industry, industry skews young because the, the people who actually go out and buy records are, are 13, 14, and 15, 16. Mm -hmm. This is true. It's not, it's not a, 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 a something that, that we have to conduct any scientific experiment on. Everybody knows that this is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. But just like how Mel said, there are people who are of a mature age group who still love hip hop. They don't listen to nothing but hip hop. They, they heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it, the opportunities are not as as available mm -hmm. to a certain set of, 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 of rappers. Mm -hmm. And it, it, would, it would be nice for, for the industry to look at, because to me, there's a whole there's a whole market out there that they're not feeding. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, of course, they got Rhino and these these um 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 recording. I mean, these um uh, um record companies that, that you know, do these stuff, right. right? Exactly. Right. But not in the sense where you see the the, the posters, the 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 the, the airplay, mm -hmm. the, the the push behind a, 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 a certain artist that's from a certain era. And and to me you wasting a valuable resource because these people, mm -hmm. and I'm not just gonna speak about us, I'm talking about a whole lot of cats. Mm -hmm. They have something to say. Okay, and, okay. And, and, and there's people who wanna listen. Okay, okay. Last three questions, guys, and cool. you, you, you've been great. Um, Mel, you, you said this and it's true, your legacy hasn't stopped. You guys are continuing to grow every day. So I'd like for you to tell us, you know, you know, tell, you know tell the audience, everybody, you know, just what each of you is up to today in 2005. Well, I'm on uh, the 2005 Look So Good Tour. And uh, <laughs> the next time that the general public see me, I will be bigger and I will be a lot richer. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. So we got the album thing we doing. Okay. Of course, VH1, uh, we'd like to thank them no for giving doubt. us a vehicle every year to show what, you know, the Pioneers is all about. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just staying fit. You know, I got like a, a bodybuilder career. I go to all the shows and, you know, and things is lovely. I mean, you know, we just okay. we just doing our thing. You know, okay. we just we we gonna hit hard. Okay. We gonna make it happen. The movie, the book. You know what I mean? Okay. Young girls. <laughs> Life is good. I mean, listen. Bye. I'm I sexy. I'm sexy. So I gotta do that. I'm doing what I gotta do. They love me. They people love me. Man, people love Belly Bell, man. Hey, listen, man. You look so good to it. 2005, going right up into 2006, 2007. Uh -huh. 20th, 20th, uh, 20th, uh, 25th anniversary of the message. It's all good, man. We 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 about to run the table. So okay. I'm happy. Scorpion. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I think right now what we doing is. We, we planting the new seed. Mm -hmm. And what the new seed is, is ultimately the end goal mm -hmm. is to get the Furious and even if Flash gonna come aboard, the original Grandmaster Flash Furious 5 doing something together. Okay. So right now, what we doing, we traveling the world, it's like me and Mel traveling the world, we mm -hmm. planting the seed okay. for the Furious and everybody to come back up. You know, we be touring a lot right now. Right. You know, we be right. doing all overseas in the UK and okay. different things like that. Okay. And trying to just bring this whole thing where it makes sense, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to get the whole group together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that way it's enough economically it makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we can just take this 
to where we know we can still take it at. Because okay. one thing that I think a lot of people just get misconstrued is like, you know, we had the original idea right. of hip hop. Right. But right now, right. that, you know, the Puffs and all the other cats was just doing a great thing, they think right. our idea is not, it don't mean Current. as much. Right. And we still have them same ideas. Right. Easily, we think of around 10 great ideas a day. Okay. I'm, uh, either individually or collectively. So okay. our whole thing is to keep it going and keep building our legacy. Okay. Right here. Okay. Uh, just staying on top of my game. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a student of hip hop. So everyone who came up under us, who studied us, I study them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that keeps me uh, one step ahead of the game. And okay. um, I plan to get together with my comrades here uh, really soon, and we're gonna we're gonna do something okay. uh, that's gonna shock the world. Okay. And you kid? Just writing and rhyming. Staying prepared, waiting okay. for that opportunity to happen. That's okay. All. That's when, it, when it happens, just being prepared for it. That's all. Okay. And great. can we say say one thing? Sure, you can I say. Yeah. No, we're not done. You done know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people, like a lot of the, the newer cats, might not know as much, but we are the, like the most sample group in the history of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Every year, at least ten groups mm -hmm. sample our stuff mm -hmm. or do it over. Mm -hmm. Last year. Grandmaster Flash for his five was the first rap group nominated to go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a street sign named after, uh, after oh, us. In front of the Supreme Court building. Up there by Yankee Stadium, two blocks from Yankee Stadium. Uh -huh. We went down into That's where Washington. I'll be when I get evicted. We went, <laughs> what, what's that thing we went in? in, in, in the Library of Congress. Yeah, and, and that's big. Uh -huh. That's yeah. really recording. Tell us, tell us. Great recording, just like you know, the records of presidents, you know, like uh, Elvis, the Beatles. Yeah, the first all okay. these like the Scott Library of Congress Jackson's for recording. Time. recording. Okay. And uh, the message is like uh, was the first. I don't know if there's any other rappers in it there's now. No but, rappers. And with the, the message is the only rap record in it. So and so we national also, recording. We just left London. Just you know, less than a couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. and they had the the major magazine. They had the top greatest live performance to ever hit the history of London uh -huh. and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, we was number, what, 46? Okay. Of yeah. um, all times. And Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yes. joint. I yeah. mean, um, Rolling Stone and yeah. our, our, our dog method was yeah. 51. Was 51 and of the top 500. Uh, top 500 greatest records ever recorded of okay. all time since okay. the history of the re the record industry. See, these are the little things right. that they try to sweep up under the carpet. You right. see. <laughs> we ain't gonna let that happen. Okay, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks to VH1, we ain't gonna let that happen. And then it's not yeah. like, you know what I mean, we sit here patting ourselves on the back. Right. But you know, right. when you know, on one breath, when you call us old school and you say it like with contempt, like we over and this and that, but we you going down more in history, in right. infamy right. history, you know what I mean, <laughs> on, on every level of the game, okay. you know what I mean, I think a lot of those cats that got some great records uh -huh. for the time, uh -huh. 20 years from now, matter of fact, we're going to talk three years from now, they won't be singing their records like that, right. Right. you know, you go on any computer, any place where you're talking about history, in fact, okay. Grandmaster Flash for his father. Okay. Uh, do me one favor, one of the things that, that we're doing this year as well, I'm sure you guys know, is uh, honoring uh, Biggie, right? Okay. And I've tried. And we've tried to end every you know session like this right. with asking people, you know, not just what the, they think about Biggie, but if they have any memories of him. You know what I mean? We're trying to really oh, paint man. a picture of the brothers. So I'd like you guys, if you can, for a second, just to talk about Biggie. Um, actually, we had a show um, mm -hmm. on Hot 97, a radio show uh, called the Mike Check Show, and um, I remember yes. when um, when Biggie. Before he blew up, um, they had him come down to the mic check show, and um, we had you know a freestyle session basically uh, with Biggie uh, on the air with us, you know, and um, and a lot of people didn't know it at that time, but you know, like you you know how you can see like a diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of knew like. Biggie was gonna catch mm -hmm. uh, the way that he did because, like, you could hear the things that he was saying, and and the way that he said it was just in the tradition of great MCs, mm -hmm. and I I always thought that about Biggie. Okay, 
And one of my, my biggest things that I like to, yes, you know, honor him and his memory is about, is even bigger than, yes, his rhyme status is like, yes, for him being a cat, you know what I mean? And to look the way he looked and everybody like made fun about the way he looked, cause he wasn't no pretty boy, I'll be sure. You know, Jerry Curl joint, you know what I mean? Everybody right. had opinion about Biggie right. before he blew up. They right. were saying dude was just straight ugly. Right. But he took that as few. And, so when, and when he said the key thing, when I knew he was so in tune, when he said black and ugly is however, I stay Gucci, that, when he said that, that's when I know you can't pull nothing over this cat eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's aware of all his surrounding. He's not just running with Puff and thinking like it's all love. You know cats are saying, yeah, he can run, but he ugly. Mm -hmm. And to me, that opened up so many doors from mm -hmm. people that ain't attractive. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Not saying he's not attractive, but you know, no, we've yeah, just yeah, been pushed yeah. to that stereotype. Mm -hmm. when you overweight, mm -hmm. you don't look good, you don't get your eyebrow arched, or whatever the case you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And he gave so many people dignity. Right. You know what I mean? That was overweight, or whatever the case may be. So right. that's one of his greatest legacies that I think that a lot of people don't touch on. Right. You know what I mean? Because after that, you used to see big dudes in clubs. You see them now, they stand around like, what? You don't like this stomach? You know what I mean? They look at you like you're crazy. And all of wow. that was the birth of Biggie. Wow. You know what I mean? Right, right, now right. it's true. I'll let you kick. Uh, nah,